Let me just firstly say, um, St. Lucia have 185,000 people to choose from. Stood tall, so tall. They stood toe to toe against a nation of 6.8 million people against Nicaragua. And uh, I want to go on record as saying it took a referee and all of them to defeat us. Mm -hmm. And so while I am gutted by what actually happened on the field, and obviously anybody who watched the game believed that St. Lucia should have been, you know, afforded a better opportunity to win that game, I am externally, eternally, in every way imaginable proud of St. Lucia and what they did at that regional tournament. I think our programs are yielding some good fruit. I want to say special congratulations to the parents of these footballers, because without them, we would not have seen what we just saw in this regional tournament. The coaches, and of course, the St. Lucia Football Association, all the efforts. And uh, we cannot forget the administrators, because when we're dealing with youth football, administrators are perhaps the most critical persons to ensure that the club structure is functioning the way it's supposed to be, to ensure that the hydration, the nutrition, the bus system for all these young people are taken into consideration. And so I want to ensure that everybody understands that this is a total national effort to get to where we get into in sport. And uh, I just want to say congratulations to all and sundry. Mr. Wilson, now, um, CPL staff in this Caribbean Premier League, um, just tell us your thoughts, your sentiments going in and the prospects that it um, brings for sports tourism in here and here. For the first time in CPL history, the games will be started in St. Lucia. And of course, they finally understood that uh, the most beautiful nation should get the first dibs. And so we're expecting an absolute bumper crowd on Wednesday um, to start off the competition. We have worked assiduously to ensure that Darren Sami Stadium continues to be one of the best in the region and indeed the world. And uh, I think in terms of the investment this government has put into the infrastructure, I think you will see uh, people impressed with the venue, um, impressed with the actual layout of the place, and uh, most importantly, impressed with the, the field, the pitch. We know that St. Lucia continues to have one of the best custodians in the region, Ken Crafton, and he, has, he and his team, they continue to do an immaculate job at that venue. So we're expecting St. Lucia Kings to reign supreme this time around. I know we've said that for the last six years. <laughs> But we're certainly hoping that this year we can certainly take it home. What about With the, the amateurs? You said about the costing and uh, how much is the amateur putting into to host such an event? I do not have the exact figure, but the work at Darren Sami is a monthly work. Um, like I clarified last time, we hired somebody to supervise works in and around the playing field, a maintenance manager because we really thought that the maintenance of Darren Sami was just, when we came in, not sufficient. And so we've been dealing with issues on a monthly basis. Um, we said early when we inherited Darren Sami, we had more than 100 leaks at the venue. And so we've been working uh, every month to ensure that we identify exactly where they were. And we've done a lot of work in terms of the roofing of the Darren Sami. Um, the sea blast is another thing we had to take into consideration given the proximity of Darren Sami to Kazaba Beach. And we've done a lot in terms of dealing with the rust around the venue. And so we continue through SSI and NLA on a monthly basis, invest in the upliftment of Darren Sami Stadium. Some people would argue at this time. Uh, You're not loud enough, boss. Some people would argue at this time spending so much money for what, four games for CPS and Michelle. Um, Rubbish. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. The morning games, we expect in India with their billion population to really uh, look into St. Lucia. St. Lucia is going to be exposed to the rest of the world. But we know the cricketing population of a, a nation like India, um, Europe, um, in South America, a lot of ind individuals, they will, St. Lucia will be exposed to all of those nations. And of course, once people see the natural beauty of St. Lucia on display for the rest of the world, we expect huge economic benefits. Uh, huge, it's a huge sports tourism product. And uh, I think whatever amount we put in, I think within a month we'll be able to recruit it anyway. We sell our young St. Lucia cricketers added to the Kings team this year. Mm -hmm. See to the importance of this opportunity for them um, on a, a large scale. 
Well, I've seen, we've seen the likes of McKinney Clark really show up as one of the prospects for St. Lucia. I want to single him out simply because of the raw talent and pace. As a pace, as a pace bowler, uh, I was able to capture some of his training session on Friday when I visited the stadium. And he looks really good, a really good prospect. And of course, we have the other individuals uh, in the camp that will get at least an opportunity to display the talent to the region and the rest of the world. I think um, that is a tremendous opportunity for them. I think that encourages them every day to wake up in the morning and train hard to put their best foot forward. And uh, we truly expect that this cadre of young West Indies, St. Lucian cricketers we have, will break, it, break into the West Indies senior team and uh, continue to perform and put St. Lucia on the map. And so it's incumbent upon us to have the necessary programs for them. And I've had extensive conversations with the owners um, of the St. Lucia Kings for a couple of programs that we will unroll immediately after CPL to keep these individuals that we've identified as being talented in a program that is sustainable, that will ensure that they continue to play cricket at a high level. Also, um, with the 2024 um, World Cup to be hosted in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the plans um, for us? I don't know if we, we're uh, was announced as a host venue yet, but mm -hmm. what are some of the plans to get um, us? Well, we certainly hope in an announcement very soon. St. Lucia did put in a bid to host some of the World Cup matches right here in St. Lucia, the dance, Sammy. Um, we're certainly hoping that we get our fair share of matches. Um, and of course, that is another, uh, that's another activity that we can look forward to planning for the entire year for. And so uh, we've seen some roadworks commence in Beauceju, thanks to the parliamentary rep for Grosile. Um We're hoping that we'll continue to deal with the infrastructure needs of uh, Beauceju and surrounding areas for this global event. Um, and we're certainly hoping that once the announcement is made, St. Lucia is well prepared to welcome the rest of the world. Right. Two more, so Jason and then Rich. And then we go. All right. um, with the problems facing regional travel at this point, how much of a crisis can you really expect to see at the Darren Summit with these games being hosted? Well, we recently, um, the Prime Minister recently uh, attended the CARICOM Summit, and of course, cricket would be on the agenda for discussions. and. Um, a lot of efforts have been made to ensure that there is more regional travel during this week and next week, and of course for the duration of the tournament. Um, so we're certainly expecting, with the work of the Ministry of Tourism, that they can perhaps give you some more specifics on the amount of planes that we're expecting. But certainly a lot of negotiations went into ensuring that um, we have a bumper crowd at Darren Sammy. Yeah, obviously, sir. Over the um, past weeks, you've been giving duty and visibility, kudos to I think you can go in the direction of a sports agency, but if we as a nation decide to do our part, each of us ask ourselves what we can do to develop sport in St. Lucia, I think that would be in itself an agency. What we've done in, in terms of football is we've brought on Earl Bologja and Stuart Charles Rivier as part of our emerging athletes program. So we can take the best of the best from nine until 15, and we can have them in a program that is as professional as, as anybody could imagine. The proper nutrition advice, proper psychosocial support in terms of mental strength, emotional building, and of course the physical nature of healthy living for these individuals. And so as a government, we have been providing the different sporting areas 
with the agencies that we can afford to provide them in terms of the support for the athletes. Under the Elite Athlete Program, you see in the likes of Julian Alfred, Michael Joseph, and some of the others, Naomi London, uh, benefiting from having financial support that I didn't have when I was an athlete uh, to get what they need monthly. Sometimes, as you deal with government, it's delayed, but we've made every effort to be athlete-centered in a way that St. Lucia has never seen. In the sport of boxing as well, you've seen a program developed up north and down south, so much so that 20 out of the 20 boxers on the national team, nine of them came out from the communities such as Bruceville and some of those areas that persons indicated had a crime, a crime problem. And so we strategically placed our coaches, a Cuban coach and some of our local coaches, gave them the responsibility of going into the schools identifying the talent and bringing them into those programs. So a similar thing in cricket, similar in football, similar in track and field. And so I think what we need as a nation is to be more supportive of our athletes. We have CPL this Wednesday, and nine out of 10 phone calls I get is for free entrance to the Darren Sammy. How are we serious about developing a sport if we don't want to provide at least kit receipts for the development of the sport? We are about to semi-professionalize football, and I'm sure persons are going to be calling the parliamentary to find out how they can enter into the venue free. But if at the end of the day you don't provide at least a $5 contribution or a $10 contribution towards the gate receipts that we could use to further develop the sport and put it out there for the rest of the world to, to see, how could you as a St. Lucian take pride when those young individuals achieve something when you've not played your part? We are the agencies. We should think of ourselves as the agencies, and that is how St. Lucia breaks into the global scene in sports. Quickly, the corporate, corporate exactly. So that's, that is that is the that is that is what we are talking about. So agencies such as the corporate St. Lucia, they must play a role. And we've seen First National Bank deciding to uh, collaborate with Julian Alfred. We've seen uh, Blue Waters in times past continue to provide sponsorship and KFC continue to provide sponsorship. And these are the banners you see at most sporting disciplines. Sajikor came on to sponsor the Sajikor tournament recently in tennis. And so we do have some corporate sponsors. The problem is these are the same corporate sponsors on rotation. We need other individuals to adopt uh, an athlete. And that's one of the programs we're going to be rolling out very soon. We need, we need associations to, so to provide at least four of the best developing athletes who are from a disenfranchised neighborhood or from a disenfranchised background. And we're going to be writing to corporate St. Lucia to provide at least $200 or $250 monthly towards that individual athlete so that they can be provided with transportation, a proper meal, and of course, some of the dynamics for them to develop. And so these are the things we at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports continue to do and encourage to ensure that our athletes continue to develop.